Fasting has to do with mortifying one's flesh by denying it food or drink or both. In other words, it is periodical abstinence from all, or some of the flesh or body's indulgences or craves. As a means of whittling down the flesh's domineering tendencies. So that the spirit, may be invigorated to access the divinity. Fasting on its own, does not compel God to answer our prayers. But it can put us in the mood or position, that we will be able to access God easily. Fasting is credited with having the ability, to subjugate the flesh, so that the spirit within, can gather some momentum, to reach out to the spirit without. The Bible makes it clear, in the book of John chapter 4 verse 24. That God is spirit and as such, he can only be accessed through the spirit, or by being spiritual. It says in the book of John, chapter 4 verse 24. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. It simply means that it takes being in the spirit, to do any business with God. For instance, in the book of Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. Until John was in spirit, he couldn't access the revelations. Even though it has been there. But until the day he was in the spirit, he was able to see the vision, the book of Revelation was based on. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet. Despite the affinity and relationship, that existed between John and Jesus Christ, while on earth. John still had to be in the spirit, to access the revelation that God wanted to give him. This goes to show that no business, between God and man, is ever possible without the man raising the level of his spirit. Else he can't reach God. Because, God is a spirit, and only through man's spirit, he can reach him. But if or when the spirit is weak or weakened, or when the flesh is dominant, it won't still have the capacity to reach God. Because the flesh dominance would have either eclipsed, or breached the connection lines between man's spirit and God. This inadvertently will make it difficult or impossible, for a person in that state to connect with God. Because the connection line has been blocked, or cut off by the flesh. But if the flesh can be weakened through fasting, bodily mortification, and denial of the things that feed the flesh. Then the flesh is whittled down, allowing the spirit to gain control and dominance. Especially if the spirit is fed with the things that nourish or invigorate it. For instance, spirit rifting music, reading of scripture, and other anointed and spirit lifting materials. Meditating on what is read, and controlled thinking or thought. When one is in this state, the spirit within a person is able to connect with the spirit without. To enable communication of the person's mind, desires, and imaginations to God. Or even attracts them to the person from God, if God approves. So principally or primarily, the purpose of fasting is not to change God. Or to force God to do things for us, but instead, to change ourselves or our state, so as to facilitate or enhance communication, or connectivity between our spirit and God. Or to make easier for the transmission of our imagination, desires, and feelings to God for an answer. Having said that, however, we must understand that it is not everything that we call fasting, is recognized by God as fasting. There are certain things we do as fasting, that God doesn't honor, nor recognize as fasting. It is not every abstinence from food, that is regarded as fasting by God. Until your fasting conforms with God's recommended guidelines, and the method of fasting, it is not yet fasting. There was a time in the Israelites' history, when they were fasting on their own, and expected God to honor it. But God took no notice of what they were calling fasting. Until they began to worry and wonder why God, no longer has respect for fasting. Well, God had to graciously send the prophet Isaiah, to correct them and put them right. God asked them, is this what you call fasting? Meaning that as long as God was concerned, what they were doing, fell short of what he considers fasting and what fasting should be. He therefore through the prophet, explained to them the kind of fasting, that can get them their expected response from God. God had to explain to them, why their fasting wasn't going anywhere, nor getting any expected results, and told them the right way to fast, if their intent is to get his attention. 
let's see it in the book of Isaiah chapter 58 from verses 3 to 11. Isaiah 58 3 to 11. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul. Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer, thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. What was actually wrong, with the Israelites fasting, that they weren't getting any results? God explained as we just read, that. 1. They fast as pleasure, while engaging in their usual daily routine, as on the normal days. With no time to feed the spirit, or do things that uplift the spirit to rise above the flesh, or dominate the flesh. 2. While they fast, they mistreat their workers, hence making their fasting have no spiritual retreat, no reawakening, no revivals or mind renewal. 3. They fight one another and engaged in a host of other flesh feeding, and nourishing exercises or activities. Thus enhancing and facilitating the dominance of flesh, over the spirit. Instead of bridging the gap or facilitating spirit dominance. This shows that they either had no idea, about the essence of fasting and how fasting work. Or they deliberately wanted to create another fasting methodology. God, however, corrected them and tutored them, on the correct way to fast. He explained to them, that fasting should be an art of genuine show of penance, regret, and being sorry for wrong deeds. Manifested with the affliction of one's soul, by denying it of the things that it treasures, or the things that it craves and not a mere physical display of religious observation or show of piety, without repentance or true contrite feeling, or any spiritual denotation. He said that, what they do, does not constitute what he regards as fasting. That fasting is not about an outward display of piety or sadness, but a spiritual exercise, showing that one is truly sorry for one's wrong deeds, and have repented from it, and that to do it the right way, they should do as follows. 1. Fast as an art of true repentance, and as such, they should undo what they have done wrongly, where it is possible. Like freeing those they have imprisoned unjustly. 2. They should release those under other forms of undeserving punishments, like forced labor, and unjust imprisonment. 3. They should end the suffering of those, whose sufferings were occasioned, or caused by their injustice and unfair practices. 4. They are to do good, as they fast, by sharing the foods they could have eaten, if they were not fasting, to the hungry. And not to accumulate them, to eat when they break their fasting. And to bring in the homeless and assist them, and help those who have no clothes to wear. 5. And to also help those whom they have earlier denied help, or are not willing to help. Particularly their relations. God says that it is only at this, or by doing these, that their fasting can gather spiritual momentum, that can ascend to God, and elicit what they needed of God. God explained to them, that it is only at that, 
that their fasting can be recognized, and it will fetch them the benefits of fasting, which include among other things. Spiritual illumination, healing, divine protection, and any other requests, that they will present to God in prayers. He said, he would answer them speedily, if they do it. God still went further, to enjoin them to be decorous in their speeches, and to refrain from attacking one another, either physically, verbally, or otherwise, so that their fasting can count, and earn them their heart's desires. Those principles are still the same and valid in today's fasting. Any fasting that will get the right and desired response from God must follow the same guidelines and must be done with honesty, sincerity, true repentance, and in a truly contrite spirit and not outward show or display of piety. Jesus says while teaching in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 16, he says moreover when ye fast, be not, as the hypocrites, of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Jesus teaches here, that fasting should be a spiritual exercise, with access to God in view, and not a proof of piety or spirituality to men. He says, that if fasting becomes an exercise of proof to men, it will also have to get its rewards from men, because that is where it was focused or directed to. But, the ones done with God in focus, will get their rewards from God. Now, what makes fasting so effective in gaining access to God? And getting God, to answer our prayers. Man is composed of two major constituents or components, the spirit and the body. In another word, man is made of spirit and body. With the soul as the intermediary, between the spirit and the body. We connect to God through the spirit, and we connect with our social environment, through the body. And the Bible says that these two components are opposing each other. Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. In other words, they struggle with each other for dominance. And it is our actions or inactions, that determine eventually who dominates. That's to say that we accord or give dominance to anyone we choose to support. And usually at the detriment or subjugation of the other. If we support the flesh to rule over the spirit. The spirit is subjugated and can hardly access God. To present to him our needs, feelings, imaginations, prayers, or as the case may be. Because it has been weakened by the atrophy, or deprivations of the things that invigorate it so it remains weak and can hardly reach out to God. While the flesh or the body remains very strong and could even be more suppressants to the spirit. And as result, we gain more of the things that the flesh attracts or brings, but little or nothing of the things that the spirit brings. Incidentally, we need God for virtually all our true needs. And it is God that has the solution to all that we need or we ever needed because the earth and fullness thereof belong to him. And that is why we need to develop our spirit's capacity through the things that feed and nourish it, such as prayer and fasting, worshiping and singing praises to God, studying and meditating in the Bible, and attending Christian fellowship with other Christian believers, listening to Christian sermons and teachings, and other spirit-raising activities. Because, how much a person is able to achieve at any point, is the function of the person's level of alignment and affinity with God. Jesus underscored this in his statement in response to the inquiry of his disciplines on why they were unable to cast out a demon from a demon possessed folk. Mark chapter 9 from verses 28 to 29. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This goes to confirm the importance and superiority of fasting with prayers. There are certain possibilities that cannot be achieved with the energy of the flesh because the strength, power, and authority to do so are domiciled with God of all possibilities. That is why we must create an environment that enhances accessibility with Him so that we will be able to draw certain possibilities from Him. 
However, many times Satan, knowing how much we can achieve with fasting, connives with our flesh, to stop us from fasting the God-recommended way. We must therefore do everything within us, to resist such temptations. And God will see us through. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, we thank you for the grace of privilege and opportunity of hearing, reading, and understanding your word. Help therefore dear Lord, to keep your word as we have heard and received. So that we will be able to actualize your visions for us, as are written in your word. Help us to learn, and to be able to keep our flesh in check, against its excesses, so that our relationship with you Lord, can be cordial and intimate, that we may be able to draw wisdom, progress, prosperity, health, longevity and other possibilities in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We appreciate you immensely for joining us today to share the Word of God. Here is another video titled, Psalm 91 Prayer, for Protection and Strength. Carefully handpicked for you to watch next. Click on the video to watch now, for we know that it will enrich you immensely. Also, if you are new here consider subscribing. And leave a comment in the comment box telling us you have subscribed. We will definitely respond to you immediately. God bless you.